I remember when I was six years old, I asked my father for a drink. I told him I was thirsty, and I remember he gave me a beer and told me to drink. My mom, I remember she kicked me out when I was 14, you know, affirmation, a lot of, you know, acceptance, stuff like that, that father is supposed to do, validate who you are, teach you things. That was missing in my life. I didn't really have nothing to really look forward to. I didn't really, I didn't really see myself living past 21. I just knew that my life was a mess. I knew the things I was involved in. I knew that my home was broken. I knew that my parents weren't together. I just knew that there was a major void in my life and I didn't know how to fill it. I, I just know that it's because of the grace of God that, I, that I'm not dead. I'd be in hell right now. Shadow of a doubt, I'd be in hell. Welcome back, everybody, to the Light It Up podcast, episode 25. Today with us, we have our co-host, Rafael Alvarez. What's up, y'all? And our guest today, Pastor Jason Sanchez. Hello, everybody. Um, so, Pastor Sanchez is currently in San Francisco, California, and he wanted to talk about his personal testimony, how he got saved, or ex his extended and more detailed testimony. Um, it's very well-known testimony and a crazy testimony at that and his life was completely transformed um, by the power of jesus he has a beautiful family now um, and even a church now so we're going to go through that his childhood um, and then his uh, young adult years and then how we got saved and the redemption story so um, pastor jason why don't you start kind of in the early stages of your life kind of where you Excuse me. Um, yeah, so I grew up in Texas, a uh, great state of Texas, as everybody's saying, because that's where everyone's moving to. Right. <clears throat> and um, my, I uh, grew up in a broken home. My parents, uh, I think I was four when they decided they no longer wanted to be married. <clears throat> and I have two brothers. An older brother and a younger brother. I'm the middle child. Uh, my younger brother and I went to go live with my mother, and my older brother stayed with my father. Um, and so we would go and visit our fa my father um, every other weekend. And the weekend that we weren't with him, my older brother would come to our house. So we were always together. Um, I'd say <clears throat> my dad was really into, uh, drinking and hanging out with his buddies. Um, I guess his agenda was more of doing what he wanted to do, uh, still partying and we would always find ourselves when we were with him at uh, at a party and staying overnight and he would be drinking and you know who knows what else that they would do as adults we were children but it wasn't very long until i uh started doing the same thing uh i remember when i was six years old I asked my father for a drink. I told him I was thirsty, and I remember he gave me a beer and told me to drink drink this. Um, I could fast forward a little bit. We would sit on the corner at the sh on the streets, and we would let the cars pass by, and people who threw out the cigarettes would go and pick the cigarettes up and would smoke the cigarettes because I used to see my dad smoking cigarettes, so I figured... Well, hey, if he does it, I'm pretty sure something we should do. <clears throat> and um, uh, probably when I was 10, 
that's the first time I started smoking weed was 10 years old, fifth grade. I remember we were walking home from school and one of my buddies had got some weed from his brother, asked us if he wanted to smoke it. And yeah, we were like, go ahead, let's, let's do it. And so uh, school wasn't really something I was really into. I uh, didn't really apply myself to school. <clears throat> I liked sports. I played sports growing up until I started hanging around people who um, were a bad influence on me. And my mom, I remember she kicked me out when I was 14. I uh, started to rebel, started hanging around the wrong people. And I had to go live with my dad. <laughs> but it wasn't a whole lot of change there because my father was really never home. He'd go to work and then he, after work, he would often go and hang out with his buddies or go to the bar, or wouldn't come back till late at night. So there was a lot of liberty, a lot of free time there. So I would always have buddies come over and we'd hang out at my house and you know, started selling drugs. So your father had a huge influence on what you were doing, how you grew up and the things you did yeah so my father wasn't really a i guess he wasn't really playing the role of a father he was more of like a buddy excuse me and so growing up without a father having a father there to be you know a father like you're supposed to be it was a lot of void in my life a lot of you know affirmation a lot of you know acceptance stuff like that that fathers are supposed to do validate who you are teach you things that was missing in my life and so just like any other young kid who doesn't have a father they're looking for that somewhere they want to be accepted they want to know that their life matters and so i started hanging out with people who thought were my friends yeah and so i think through the influence of that uh watching him you know watching rap videos listening to rap music mtv bet i tell people that's what raised me my mom was too busy working her job uh when i was younger uh my mom would go to work and i i would me and my younger brother would be at home by ourselves until my mom came home from work so uh i would i was very independent at a young age and um I'm, oh i was just gonna ask real quick i'm gonna ask this periodically but what were your thoughts on god so far at this point so my mom would um take me to catholic church growing up okay i remember i, I think i did I think I did my first, I think it's called a Holy Communion, I think is the first thing. And then I think the second one's a confirmation. Is it a first yeah. communion? Yeah, first and then, communion, conversation, and on and on. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I did the Holy Communion. I remember Wednesday nights we'd have catechism, which was like a church service. But uh, I remember when I was nine years old, I told my mom I ain't going back to church, or at least to that one. <laughs> uh, um, Wait, and she, she did that walk <laughs> yeah wow yeah I, I i remember you know i just remember it was wednesday night and me and my buddy he had a dirt bike and we were riding a dirt bike and i remember looking at my watch and it was time for me to go and my mom was like hey we need to go i was like oh, i don't want to go and she's like well kind of had like an argument but i just told her i'm not going back i don't it did nothing for me it was no really it, i mean she would drop me off so it's like she wouldn't even go to church herself why would she expect me to go right and so i didn't really understand uh, i didn't really understand a whole lot i just knew that they teach you about god and whatever the catholics believe but i just wasn't into it and i remember when i was nine i pretty much pushed back and it worked and mm -hmm. so <clears throat> um yeah my thoughts on god like i knew there was a god i didn't really know him personally I had a reverence for God, but as far as like having a relationship, I, I didn't know anything of that sort. Didn't I know that that was something that you could do? I didn't know 
how to get close to God. I didn't know any, I have no concept of any of that. So church wasn't really something that uh, I did often or did on my own. Although I do remember that when I was in high school, uh, my buddy, one of the guys I used to hang out with invited me to church on a Wednesday night. And I went with him, him and his brothers, his, there was four brothers. And then he had a big family, had cousins and stuff that would go. And it was, it was, it was, I mean, I, I'd show up to church high. I mean, I'd be high. <laughs> um, but I do remember that was whenever they had the, the, um, what's that series called? With Kurt Cameron, I forget the name of it. Is it the uh, Tribulation or the Rapture movies? The, the Rapture. I, I want to say it was a Rapture because it was like 94, 95. Okay. But I do remember watching that and it's kind of scared me. <laughs> and I thought, I thought to myself, man, if this is real, man, I'm in trouble. And I do remember the pastor did an altar call. And I remember I had responded to the altar call because. Uh, I just knew that if it had to do with God, it was almost like, it was like, we don't play with God. Like, even though I didn't have like any understanding of, you know, uh, the way you're supposed to live, the things you're supposed to do. I just knew that God was God and like, he was the one, like he could do anything. And so, um, I do remember I, I did that for a little bit, a little while, but it kind of was just like a phase. There was like really no follow up. Hey, Wednesday, let's go here. But it wasn't like they invited me out. There was no follow up. Nobody called me. Hey, come to church. It wasn't like, hey, we got church on Sunday. It was more like a Wednesday night, like tea thing. Mm. And so I went. So and so, um, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, let's go back to um, to uh, you were explaining a little bit of how you grew up as a teen, or you were about to. Yeah, so I think I want to say about middle school, I, I started really acting out. I remember I used to be quiet until about fourth, fifth grade. And then I think about sixth grade, I just didn't really care. I don't know if it was just like a rebellious stage, but I just, I got in trouble a lot at school. Uh, they had um, this thing called uh, SAC. I think it's they call it in school suspension now, uh -huh. where they like where like you can't be part of class. Like you have to like go to this other room and sit in the room. There's a bunch of desks with dividers, and you have to like sit there and do your work. And there's pretty much if you're in trouble or if you're bad, that's where the kids went before they suspended you. So I remember I, I spent a whole lot of time. I think in eighth grade I had the record. Oh for wow! Being there, yeah, I was in there longer than I was in regular classes through the year. That's it was just crazy. Wow! So it was just um, <laughs> leading up to the next thing in life that I was, you know, just stages of rebellion and getting in trouble. Yeah. Was there? Yeah, so I, oh, was there any reason you were you wanted to, or you were getting in trouble? You just, I just didn't care. It was to the point where, um, the home at life at home wasn't really the best, and um, I didn't really, I really had, I mean, nothing to literally live for. Um, didn't really, no motivation to do good to make good grades. I didn't really have, like I said, my mother and father wasn't like, they were like, hey, let's do your homework. You know, you have to do your homework. You gotta get good grades. There was none of that. Like my mom didn't really, she really didn't have any hands on other than going to work and giving me a place to live, providing for me. Uh, was no really involvement. Like I didn't really have a real relationship with my family. Like my mom, my dad, it was just, they were there, but there was no relationship. Like even till today, I, I mean, I have a relationship, but it's nothing anywhere near like 
I see other people, like my wife's family. Like I'm closer to my wife's family than I am to my own family. Um, so it was just like, I didn't know any better because I didn't never knew a family was supposed to be structured like that or be have relationship or tell people they cared about you or that they loved you or no affection. There was nothing of that sort at all in, involved. And so I, I don't really don't remember, to be honest with you, um, why it was, it was just, I just didn't care. Like, just, yeah. I think without the proper nourishment, you just didn't yeah. really know what to do. Yeah. And so at that point it was just like, I guess you could say just trying to figure life out at a young yeah. age. Like I knew my life sucked <laughs> if I could say that. Um, I just I couldn't wait till I had it. I couldn't wait till I was old enough to move out and do my own thing. And so, uh, I think that's when I start. I think in high school is when I started selling drugs because I needed money. I was too young to work a job, but I, I wanted to have money to do stuff. Yeah. And um, uh, and the well, I'm just saying what what. Uh, what progressed yeah, is you I, went I, off I think, from high school from mm -hmm, when you I had think, high school. Yeah, high school it was more like drinking drugs. Um I think I started snorting coke when I was fourteen. Um one of my buddies brother used to you know, used to sell coke and so we'd go to his house and he'd just give it to us for free. And we would just do it all night drinking, partying and at that point, it was like, you know, more drugs. Anything I could take, I would take it. I really had no, um, didn't really care if I would die or whatnot. It, that didn't really cross my mind. It was more like, what does this drug do? How does this drug feel? Oh, I've done this. Let me try that. Almost to like, just, I guess, uh, experimenting. So there wasn't really anything that I wasn't opposed to. I would I would do it. Like somebody had some, like, you know, we do acid. We do, um, we start smoking like PCP, Sherm, um, formaldehyde, we call it wet, uh, sip and syrup. I mean, it was just unlimited resources where I lived. So it wasn't like finding drugs or getting a hold of drugs was hard to do. And how was the, um, how were your, or who were your influences at this point? Was it still your dad? Was it your um, friends now? No. Um, I think once I was exposed to drugs and stuff like that, it was just a matter of, um, I had to find a way I could pay to, to buy the drugs. So that's, I think when I started selling drugs, wasn't to make that well one was to make money but i think a big part of it too was just to was for to i had to facilitate my habit to be able to pay for it so you were selling drugs so you can get the money to pay for the drugs yeah pretty much I, right. yeah it, was that just the thought process of you like going in high school or just going to do more drugs like every day in day out just yeah. try to get as high as you can yeah not stop thinking about things and and that's it that's it from the moment i woke up to the minute i went to sleep was like i would stay high i'd wake up in the morning and i remember i'd just start rolling up some weed i start off with smoking a blunt before i even left my house before i even left my house to go to school or people would come pick me up and we'd smoke weed before we go to school and then we'd, we'd drink. I mean, we'd go on break for lunch and we'd get some alcohol and we'd take it back and we'd, we'd drink it. I mean, there was just no limit. Whether it's drugs or alcohol, there was, that's pretty much what the, what the mindset was. You know, mm -hmm. how messed up could you be? How messed up can you get? I mean, when you really have nothing to live for, I mean, that's really what, what it becomes. But, um, so was this all through high school 
or was there like a yeah. sunset changed and like did no. you grew up or? no no it was all pretty much all through high school um okay. i'd find ways to get, get creative to start selling drugs I'd, I'd take drugs to school and then that was really one of the motivations that i went to school was because i didn't really go to school to do my work i just went to school because now i was selling drugs to people who i knew i could make money off of and so i would take whatever i could get my hands on and uh go sell it and um did you ever kind of stop and think what you were doing i know that's that might be a weird question but you ever kind of stop and just like i don't know process it no i mean i didn't really have a um didn't really have nothing really look forward to I, I i just i didn't really i didn't really see myself living past 21 like if i if i made it to 21 that that would be a milestone because it's like that mindset you know live fast die young and so i i just there was nothing for me to think about i didn't think about getting old and having a family or what like that like i mean i thought about that as a kid you know, I, I'm going to grow up one day and I'm going to have a family. But whenever teenage years, I think all that kind of just goes out the window and you just live in, live in life day by day. So what were your, what were these, um, these thoughts of growing up and having a family? What were, what were those like? That was mainly as younger, like elementary. Um, just knowing that my family was broken my mom remarried i think when i was six had a stepfather there but i didn't really give him a chance to be a stepfather to me even though he tried i already wrote him off because he wasn't my father but looking back today i realized that god put somebody in my life to step in and be fill in the void that was that i was missing but i was so blind to see it like I have a stepfather who did more for me than my father did. You know, he would help me with schoolwork. He would help me. He was super smart. Um, and he would always be willing to help. And then sometimes when I was like, man, I'm not going to do this. I'd wake up in the morning and my homework would be done for me. I mean, just like stuff that he would go above and beyond. But the fact that he wasn't my biological father, I totally just discounted him and wrote him off. And I think just from seeing your, you know, your actual father act the way he did i think that kind of maybe muddled your vision of what he was going to be as a father right probably yeah probably let's go back to high school so uh was there anyone at school oh, can you see me kind of froze on me yeah. sorry <laughs> um was so was there anyone who now you notice was trying to do a positive uh influence with you that try to help you like stop doing drugs or or like they there was someone who truly cared about you but you just like blast them off or was it just straight up you were on the drug and like selling and there was no one there ever was there for you at all yeah pretty much there was no one really everybody was just caught up doing their own thing like like i said my mom was living her own life living her own world like she'd come home but it wasn't like hey there was no conversations like hey how was your day how is this going what's going on it was there's nothing like that it was like she'd come home from work she'd probably go in the kitchen make some food and then she'd go and watch tv basketball or sports or something and so it was like that was her thing and so then for me it was like well that was my time to just do whatever i had to do um there was no really positive role models like i couldn't say that there was to be off to be off to be honest with you I, I there wasn't i didn't have that in my life there wasn't really anybody who was like i said outside going to that church when i was probably freshman or junior there wasn't really anybody who reached out to me nobody ever came knocking on my neck we didn't have i didn't like you know how we outreached like we there's not there wasn't someone who came and Aside from the Mormons, but I knew the Mormons were were twisted people. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really didn't have that. It was more just 
just day to day life, you know, how can I make money? You know, I take dice, I take cards with me. We gamble, we, you know, we, we'd hustle. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was just what I was, what I what I knew, like, that's what I did. Um, it's kind of hard to, cause you know, a lot of people do have people, they have family members or someone, but I don't, my family, we were never close. I never really had close relatives like that. I really never had anyone who was like, Hey man, this guy's doing bad. We probably should help him out or, or try to get him on the right track. I, I mean, I got in trouble a couple of times, you know, got, you know, got still in and chop lifted and I had to do community service and I mean, stuff like that. But aside from that, it was just like, well, I'm here to do what I got to do. And as soon as I do my time, then I'm on to the next one. And, then you go and the whole point is not to get caught. You know, I get picked up for curfew one time. I got, I mean, I got in trouble with the law a lot, but it was like, it wasn't never, never like, Hey man, you got to straighten your life out or something. It was just more like, okay, <laughs> you screwed up. Don't get caught next time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was probably the guy who, did everything that my buddies did, but I was probably the one who probably didn't, didn't was did never get caught. I mean, you know, my, my house got raided when I was uh, 17, 18. I, I don't remember if I was 18 yet or not. Your mom's house? Or? No, my dad's house. I was selling drugs out of my dad's house and my house got raided. And so. What did they? I, I don't. Happened? Yeah, well, see, that's the thing too. Is like even when my house got raided, I, 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 my phone was tapped and my house under surveillance, and I was supposed to uh, get, I was supposed to re up the night before, and my dope man didn't, you know, he was on a set schedule, he didn't answer his phone after nine p.m. every day, and so I called him and says, "Hey, man, I need a, I need some, I need a re up, I need you to come through and help, you know, drop some more stuff off and." He's like, well, I got some stuff to take care of. I'll, I'll call you when I'm done. And thankfully, whatever he did happened because it was after nine o'clock and it never went through. The next day is when the cops showed up and kicked him on door. And so it's like stuff like that. Like I, I should have gotten, in, I should have been in jail, in prison. But when they showed up, they, they, I didn't have nothing on me. But you know, drug paraphernalia, scales, and paraphernalia. But it was a class B misdemeanor. They couldn't arrest me and charge me with stuff but had i got what i was supposed to get it would probably been a different story it would been a different outcome so do you looking back now do you see god's hand and protection on your life back then yeah I, I yeah looking back now there's things that i think god had put into me as a young kid that i didn't really understand there was things that even like being pure like i remember like i wanted to be pure in high school, I was like, man, I didn't really want to sleep around with these girls because I just knew I wanted to find someone who was going to be worth it. But then I think once I got to about 16 or 17, it was just like, man, I just got to the point. I just didn't care. And I just started, you know, being promiscuous and, you know, getting involved with, you know, girls and fornicating. And I just, I see the stuff that, even uh like i said to the whole drug deal the raids stuff like that could have set me on a totally different course but i do know that because of that i ended up moving to california and so i just seen that like looking back seeing the little things that did happen or the things that did go on i look back and i was like yeah that that had it been because of you that i'm not dead today i'm not in prison today didn't get caught here when I should have. I've been shot at many times and didn't get hit. I could have been dead right now. So I, I just, I think about, and it's funny. It's, I don't say it's funny. It's not funny, but it is funny because I look back and like these testimonies, I, I really, I, I did a, uh, one of these podcasts before and I really didn't understand like the stuff that I really did, you know, until like stuff like right now, if like we want to talk about this, like I don't think about this stuff every day, but then I'm starting to stop and think I'm going back and I'm remembering things that I did. And I'm just amazed, like, wow, like I, I should have been dead more than once. You know, I should have been, 
somewhere else. I, I just know that it's because of the grace of God that I that I'm not dead. I'd be in hell right now. Shadow of a doubt, I'd be in hell. All the things that I've done at a young age too. Yeah. I definitely know God. So you said you grew up, not grew up, um so I'm sorry. Uh you were going to church in high school and all that, right? Like just Wednesdays? Like how yeah. did that like affect your life like going to church like i knew younger life i mean younger life younger age when you're smaller you didn't want to go to church and all that what so you said you you answered the prayer of um salvation and all that did anything really change for church or you just were just hanging out with buddies basically yeah I, I i i was definitely drawn to it but i I just had a whole lot of, one, I had a lot of pride too. Um, I, like I said, nobody really pulled me aside and was like, hey man, you know, you prayed. You know, obviously there was a reason why I lifted my hand. And I even remember, I, I never forget. I even remember like when I lifted my hand to answer the altar call, it was like, everyone looked at me like they were so shocked. Like I was probably the last person they would thought would respond to an altar call because they knew who I was. They knew the things that I did. They knew all that. And so, but at that point I didn't, it didn't really matter. Like I just knew that God was real. I mean, I didn't know how to be a Christian. I didn't know how to live right, how to live clean. I didn't know, you know what sin was. I just knew that my life was a mess. I knew the things that I was involved in. I knew that my home was broken. I knew that my parents weren't together. I just knew that there was a major void in my life and I didn't know how to fill it other than uh, the drugs and the alcohol and the relationships is all I knew to, it's a temporary fix for the emptiness. Hey guys, so that's going to do it for us. Um, that is part one. Make sure to tune in for part two next Saturday. Uh, part two of Jason's test Pastor Jason's testimony is going to get into um, his adult years and what happened after that, how he moved to California. And then um, we're going to get into how he got saved. Um, so make sure you tune into that. Um, if you enjoy this content, like, subscribe, share this content, give us a good rating on Spotify if that's what you're into. Follow us. Five stars. And um, follow us on Instagram and check out merch options and more on that thank you guys we'll see you next week god bless you've never given your life to jesus christ if you've never asked him into your heart as your personal lord and savior i would like to pray with you i didn't grow up in church i didn't grow up knowing jesus but there was a lot of decisions that i made that led me to a place of brokenness, emptiness, a place of uh, bitterness. And there's things in my life that I experienced, didn't know who to turn to for help, didn't know who to ask for answers. And uh, it wasn't until I surrendered my heart to Jesus that he came into my heart and changed me. And maybe you want to pray that prayer i'd like to lead you into a simple prayer and just repeat these words after me you say father god i come to you as a sinner i believe you sent your beloved son to die on the cross for my sin i invite you into my life as my lord and as my savior forgive me of my sin i repent of my sin i turn from my sin and I surrender my life to you. Help me to live for you and make right decisions all the days of my life. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.